are not prepared. Welcome to another car review video guys. Today we're gonna check out all of the cars that got announced on the 23rd of November. That's today, right? Nailed it. We have seven new cards in and some of them are pretty interesting, so hope you enjoy. Drop a like and a subscribe if you do and now let's check those cards. Okay, starting off with the latest announced cards, Beast Stalker Tavish. Six mana counter hero card that gives you five armor as they all do. Let's check it out, it's quite the mouthful. So the battle cry is discover and cast two improved secrets. From the get-go, we already see that this for 6 mana is extremely powerful, cause you get discover 2 secrets, which we all know is very good, seeing how awkward it could be to even play against one discovered secret from Ringling Rifle. The hero power here is Summon Pet, which is basically Animal Companion, cause it does exactly that, summon an Animal Companion for the cost of Animal Companion, which is 3 mana. We got the good old Huffer, Leoc and Misha back in the house. Now the improved secrets are, for Freezing Trap the mana cost on the return minion goes up to 4 mana, so with this secret you will be able to render unplayable quite a few minions, even 7 drops. Uh, with the improved Snake Trap you get free 2-2 snakes instead of 1-1 snakes, with Pack Tactics you get a couple of free frees instead of only 1, improved Open the Cages gives you 2 animal companions instead of 1, and the interesting secret here is Improved Ice Trap, which is a secret we don't already have. So I do believe this is actually a spoiler for a new secret we will be seeing for Hunter not too long from now. And the new secret is, when your opponent casts a spell, return it to their hand instead and it costs 2 more. Which is basically a freezing trap for spells. And it is a very interesting mix between Oh My Yog and Counter Spell and Freezing Trap. And I really like this design, it does feel like a very powerful secret especially against classes that don't have too many cheap spells to test with. All in all, I do believe this is gonna be extremely well fitted into Secret Hunter and that deck already seems to be built. It does have enough support for it to exist and I'm giving this one 5 stars as well and probably calling Secret Hunter tier 1 already. Moving down to the mage where we have 3 new mage cards revealed. Starting off with Mass Polymorph, which is a 7 mana transform all minions into 1-1 one -one sheep. I think this is gonna be a meme card, I think it's gonna be good when you discover it, but I don't believe people are actually gonna be running this card into their decks. Maybe it might find room as a one of in a big spell mage, which we are seeing the game is trying to bring support for, but as a standalone 7 mana, I'm not sure it's good enough. It's gonna be great against death rattle decks, that's for sure, like priest is gonna be crying, demon hunter as well, but I'm not sure you are gonna be happy running this if the meta remains as fast as it does. I'm giving it 2 stars for now. You're you're gonna be happy to discover this when you need it, but I don't believe you're actually gonna be hard running this most of the time. Next up we have the Mage Hero card, which is an 8 mana Magister Dongrasp. <laughs> I hate it already. Battlecry, recast a spell from each spell school you've cast this game. Is this more support for Quest Mage Blizz? Like seriously? Have we not learned our lessons already? But then again this is a turn 8 card so who has time for that? The hero power here is deal 1 damage and honorable kill gain plus 2 damage. So if you manage to kill a minion with this, next time it's gonna be a 2 mana deal 3 damage and if you kill again it's gonna be a 2 mana deal 5 damage. So it has infinite scalability. I'm not sure this is gonna be good for Quest Mage but it definitely makes enough sense for the big mage they're trying to push now. The recast the spell from each spell school you've cast is also pretty strong, especially with the new pirate we got with dead mines. So card draw and extra value will not be a problem with this card, but I'm not sure how well it's gonna work. Most of the hero cards I'm rating with 5 stars, but this one sitting at 8 mana I think 4 stars for now is the safe bet chat. You tell me in the comments what do you think about this one. Moving down to the last mage card for today, that is Rune of Archmage. Cast 20 mana worth of mage spells at enemies. So this is basically an improved Salarian Prime without a body. 20 mana worth of spells is a lot, like a lot. Imagine getting uh, 10 wildfires out of this, that would be insane indeed. It does sound strong and if the support for big mage actually works out with uh, Belinda and such, it might make its cut into the deck like that. 
Again, it's gonna be great to discover when you need it, when the game has uh, progressed enough for you to actually play it that late. But sitting at nine man, but sitting at nine mana, I'm not exactly sure this would be amazingly amazing. For now, I think it's a free store card, but throughout the expansions with more good big spells for Mage, I think this is gonna be a five star card at some point, but probably not this expansion. Time will tell, obviously. Moving down to Paladin, where we have Brasswing, an eight mana nine seven dragon. At the end of your turn, deal two damage to all enemies, honorable kill, restore four health to your hero. So this is basically a more expensive Lurbum of Hope kind of deal, like uh, two damage AOE on turn eight. That's not gonna cut it most of the time. We don't exactly have ways to discount dragons well. I don't know, chat. This kind of seems like a pack filler kind of card. Like, Arena's gonna love it, but I don't think we're gonna be running this into decks unironically. I don't think this is a uh, constructed competitive material right here. Too expensive. It might get some play if Nazat Paladin gets back into the game, possibly. But even then, like, maybe with Vondar. Maybe, just maybe. With Vondar, it might actually have some support for this. But I'm not sure if for 8 mana, I feel like we have some better choices. I think we have better choices. I'm giving it 3 stars for now, chat. It, it feels like a bait. And the last card is the hero card for Warrior, which is a 7 mana, Rakara the Veleris. Battlecry, equip a 5-2 unstoppable force. If you guys remember, Paladin got the immovable object, so that's a very cool cross-reference between Carol and Rakara. I'm not gonna be surprised if they actually have a, a line together if they face each other, like immovable object against unstoppable force kind of deal would be pretty, pretty fun. But unstoppable force, when you swing at an enemy minion, that minion is also going to uh, attack the enemy hero, basically. Uh, and I don't think it matters if it's killed or not. It is always going to get smacked. It's not confirmed yet, but I really think it has to work like that. Because when you think about it, orcs throw dead stuff or alive stuff at other life stuff to kill it. So I really think even if you kill the minion, it still should whip the hero uh, with its attack and then die. So that's pretty cool. Uh, for the hero power we have Grand Slam, which is deal 2 damage hero power. And honorable kill, gain 4 armor. Pretty, pretty cool. This might actually fit a more mid range style warrior deck. Uh, God knows we love to change the hero power of warrior into something that actually deals damage instead of the armor. Back in the day, we used to use Finley for that a lot. This is basically like a better shadow hero power from Priest. Because you also have the chance of gaining armor if you honorably kill a minion with it. Even the opponent, but you don't care about armor at that point now, do you? Uh, I like the cards, but I don't think it's as busted as the others. I think I'm giving it 4 stars for now. Might turn out to be uh, a 5 star material card, like included in most warrior decks. But for now, compared to everything else, solid broken other stuff, I think five stars, uh, 4 stars is enough here. Okay, I think that was the last. No, we have a neutral as well. And the last card for today is a 4 mana Frozen Mammoth. This is a beast, sitting at 6 attack and 7 health. This is frozen until you cast a fire spell. I do believe Mage might actually pick this minion up. Uh, some kind of a more tempo-y oriented uh, mage possibly. Uh, they have access to a lot of cheap fire spells, including the zero mana fire spell, one mana, first, second flame kind of deal. But the thing is, you don't actually need to be unfreezing this as soon as you play it. So on turn four, you just slap it, and on turn five, you have five mana to figure out how you want to unfreeze it. So I really think this is gonna see play uh, for mages, and probably not only. Like, uh, what other classes have a fire spell? Shaman has some. Warlock also has access to some fire spells, but I don't know. I do believe that Mage is gonna be the class that's gonna abuse this uh, Mammoth the most. Again, I think it's a uh, four-star material. It does have a lot of potential. It is easily uh, cheating out stats like that. So yeah, I'm calling it as a four-star for now. That's gonna be it for this card review, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget you can also enter my big Hearthstone bundle giveaway. Check out the information in the description and enter. Good luck. Thanks for watching. I'm Crystal5 and I'll see you in my next video or stream.